Hey, this is Eran Stern with the third and final part of this series when we take a look at RG Warp tools from Red Giant Software. This time, we'll see how we can achieve better results for compositing a corner pin track. Now, for this matter, I want to use this clip. Here you can see my erratic swing of a cell phone which I'm trying to steady. Hmm. It's so heavy, my hand is shaking, okay? So, since I'm using After Effects CS4, I'm not going to bother myself to try to track this using After Effects built-in tracker, due to the fact that CS4 now comes bundled with Mocha AE from Imagineer software. So, I'll switch to Mocha and handle this clip over there. I'm also not going to get into a great details explaining how to work with Mocha. For that you can search the cow library for a tutorial from Aaron Rabinowitz which explain exactly what to do and how to get the best results out of Mocha. So I'm going to skip a few stages here but the basic idea is that you have to import your clip into Mocha and then using X splines or B spline, just define a rough shape that will hold most of the pixels that you want to track. And it doesn't need to be accurate. So something like this should work. Just make sure that it has enough room to work with enough details to capture. And since Smoka is not going to track this individual point, it's going to track and identify this plane, this planar of the cell screen that we see here. So after you define this shape, you need to go to this button, the track forward, and start to track. And basically leave Mocha to do its thing, and you should most of the time yield great results. So we'll skip in time to the point where I track this shape, and now I have a great tracker that I accompany my historic moves with the cellular phone. And from here, you can also insert a clip and say, let's use the Mocha logo. Now you can create a playback here inside Mocha just to check that the tracker is indeed following the screen. And even here inside Mocha, we can see the problem that we'll have inside After Effects when we want to composite a screen on top of this phone. And the most obvious problem is that here inside Mocha, of course, we don't get motion blur movement. So the screen here stays sharp all the time. And this will be the exact behavior of After Effects. So we will see how we can maybe solve it inside After Effects. And of course, how we take benefit of the RG corner pin effect, which have these motion blur options. But before doing so, let's go under the Adjust Track tab and export our data so we can use it inside After Effects. So I'm going to press Export Tracking Data and I need to make sure that I've got After Effects CS4 Corner Pin Data and then you can either do Save or Copy to Clipboard. Because I want to use this information inside a third-party plugin, I will hit Save and navigate to my results folder and let's just call this track cell screen and do save. Now we can switch back into After Effects and try to compose it both elements. Back inside After Effects, what we want to do is take our reflection girl composition and place it on the screen of my mobile phone. So let's drag our mobile phone to a new composition and we'll just pull this composition out so it will be on the root of our project. And what we want to do now is apply the corner pin data that we have from Mocha here inside After Effects. So first let me just grab this reflection girl and place it here. And the first thing you need to do before applying data from Mocha is to make sure that the composition that you are applying the data to, which is our reflection girl, is at the same size, the same dimension as your master composition. And this is not the case, of course. So I'm not going to scale it. 
I'm going to use a different solution. Let's select our mobile phone and we don't need to hear the audio for it right now. So I'm going to disable the audio and duplicate another copy of it. Select both layers and go under layer and choose pre-compose. And now I will call this one screen and let's open this new composition. Delete from it the mobile phone. Select our reflection girl, right click on it, and from the transform choose fit to comp. This way we are sure that our screen comp is actually at the same size of our mobile phone comp. So once we are here, we are ready actually to paste those keyframes. So the default behavior, this is what I want to show you first, is that if you have your keyframed copy, you can just paste them. But since we save them to a file, let me go to the finder and open the file. And here we can use select all and just copy the text from this file. Come back to After Effects. Make sure that we are at the first frame of our composition and the layer that we want to apply the keyframe is selected and just paste those keyframes. So After Effects will basically apply the corner pin effect to the composition that you have. And if you create a RAM preview, then you will see that your tracking data is really indeed applying itself to this screen. But we've got a few problems. The most obvious is that we have to mask our finger here, or my finger, if I have to be correct. But the second thing is even more obvious that we don't have the motion blur for this layer. Because we used an effect, this layer actually don't have any moving keyframes. So if we enable motion blur here in After Effects and even enable it here, nothing will happen to this layer. The corner pin effect does not respect motion blur. So what we need to do is find some method that we can apply motion blur to this layer. So of course you can use an adjustment layer and apply to this adjustment layer the CC force motion blur effect. So let's do just that. Let's go under layer new and create ourselves an adjustment layer. And to this adjustment layer, go under effect time and use the CC force motion blur effect. And it does the job. Again, you have to play with the shutter angle here because most of the time after effects won't get it right. So for this example, it's moving to the opposite way. So I might have to play with it. And maybe I will also need to play with the motion blur samples. So this method will work, but of course we will not use it as is because I want to show you how you can benefit from the warp corner pin effect, which has a solution just for this problem. So first, let me just get rid of the adjustment layer here. We can also turn off motion blur and for the whole comp we can turn off the motion blur because as we saw it has no effect on this layer. And let's not forget to select the layer and delete the corner pin effect. We will use now the RG corner pin effect instead so we don't need to have two of them. So let's go under the effects and preset and type down RG C, which should isolate the RG corner pin. Now, double click in order to apply this effect. And before we'll do anything, let's make sure that our playhead is at the first frame of our comp. This is very important for this procedure to succeed. Now, look at the top of the RG corner pin effect and you will see the mocha import option. So, what I'll do is go under this menu and say load to pins to load our results that we tracked from Mocha. I will navigate to my folder and select the cell screen text. This file holds all the tracking data from Mocha and just say open to this. Now you immediately see the same results. So actually what we can see here if we will drill down to pins is that the RG corner pin effect has the same engine corner pin that will just basically do the same thing so it will track our screen into the same place where the corner pin usually does so it's right now behaving the same way but we have more controls here first we have an offsets 
which allows us to do minor correction after the fact. So if you see that something is not exactly as you expect, you can adjust it over here as well. But usually you want to maybe go under and choose the reposition, which are great helpers if you just need to translate all your X value or all your Y value to a different location. So for example, just to make it clear, because I don't think that I need to do it over here, but let's just zoom in a little bit so we will see it better and pan our comps. Now you can see that if I'm going to use this translate X, it will just slide the screen a little bit to the left or to the right. So if you need to do something like this, same goes with the Y. And this is a great helper tools. And even better, we've got scale X and scale Y individually and even rotate. So by holding down command or control on the PC, you can really refine your scale according to whatever you see. So in most cases, this will come very handy if you just need to scale all your tracking a little bit down so it will may look even better when you're doing your composite over here. And now just to make it look even more believable, I will change the blend mode of the layer from normal to overlay. So this will just make our screen look like it belongs to the scene. And of course you can create a RAM preview just to check that everything is tracking as you expected. I will just do a few seconds just to make sure that we will see the problem with the motion blur here once again, because this is the next thing that we want to attack. So I think that this will do. And of course you can see that when my hand is moving, we get great motion blur to the picture, but this new tracking data is not affected. So let's just scroll down and open the motion blur. And I want to remind you that this motion blur also exists in the two other plugins that we reviewed, the reflection and the shadow. But this is the best way to demonstrate it. So now we don't have any motion blur occurring. So what I will do is set it from comp setting to on because I want to control it from here. If I will do it like the comp, then I will have to go into the composition setting and readjust it from there. Now here I have a dynamic shutter angle. So by changing this shutter angle, I can determine on the screen how much blur I think that this should need. And I think I will stick with somewhere around the 100, maybe 110 for this example. Now you can also change the samples, which means how many samples this blur will generate. So if you want to be more accurate, maybe raise them until maybe 16, which is like After Effects default. And most important, you can adjust the shutter phase. So you can move it to both direction. And I think that here, this is a subjective thing. So you have to test it in few places over your comp to just make sure that you've got it right and sometimes it is a method of trial and error, but again, you can keyframe this value and make it look like it really, really doing the correct angle for your composition. So even now we can see that we've got ourselves a much better result, much more believable result than what After Effects building tracker yield for us. Now to finish this shot, I will unshy my shy layers and here I have a duplicate of my mobile phone, but this is of course my finger so I can put it on top of everything. And just to show you what I did is just a mask that I put on top of my finger so it will just basically block my finger on top of the cell screen. And now we can go to the first frame, hover on top of the composition window, change our zoom, and create our final RAM preview to check the result. You can now judge for yourself if this looks better than what you usually used to. I think that these three filters can save you a lot of time if you're doing screen replacement, reflections, and shadow jobs. And come on, admit it, you do this all the time, huh? You're just like me. So there you have it. Use After Effects built-in tools or use RG Warp. Whatever you do, don't drink and drive at the same time, unless you want to live in the shadows 
and without a reflection. This is a run stern for creativecow.net saying goodbye.